You must have seen that mom wears beautiful soft and shiny saris on special occasions. The texture, beauty and the luster of the fabric grabs a lot of attention and appreciation. But what is this fabric exactly? It's nothing but silk. Yes, we have come across this term several times. Let us now understand what silk is and how the fibers are obtained. To start with, can you tell me the source of silk fibers? Is it a plant or any animal? It's an animal. This small worm called a silkworm gives us silk threads. But how can we get threads from such tiny creatures? And how many threads can this little one give us? Let's get to know the complete process by understanding the silkworm's life cycle. To begin with, the first stage is where the eggs are laid by the female moth on leaves. Which plant leaves are preferred by the moths? It is the leaves of plants like mulberry which are preferred. So the egg stage is the first stage. The next stage is where the eggs develop into larvae. Larvae are forms that appear somewhat like this. Yes, the worm-like structures. The larvae grow in size by feeding themselves on the mulberry leaves. So the growth in these is gradual. The growth stages of these larvae are also given a scientific name. The stages are called instar. In literal terms, instar means the phase between the two molting processes of the insect larva. So in this case, we can say the larvae grow into first instar, second instar, third instar and so on till they feed themselves enough. Once the larvae are content with the amount of food consumed, that is the leaves, they enter the next stage. This stage is their resting phase. So for resting, all we need is a cozy cover around ourselves. Just like the blanket that we take while sleeping. Similarly, even these larvae try to make a cover around them. This is when they secrete slimy thread-like structures from their mouth. They swirl their head in all directions when secreting the threads. As a result of this movement, a thick coat of threads gets formed around their complete body. This coat is called the cocoon. Did you know that this cocoon is what is of great interest to us? Because it is this structure that will give us the silk threads after we process it. Once the cocoon is formed, the larva inside it starts resting and enters the next stage of its life cycle called the pupa stage. The pupa stage is where the organism is sessile which means it does not usually move and it starts developing the organs which adult moths have. So here the pupa rests inside the cocoon and starts developing into an adult. After it develops completely, the next stage that is the adult stage is reached. The mature moth is now ready to break the cocoon and fly away. This is the complete life cycle of a silkworm. So now can you tell me how silk is obtained from these animals? The cocoon is the main source of silk threads. Once the pupa develops into an adult and flies away leaving the cocoon behind, the cocoons can be collected and the threads are obtained. The threads in a cocoon are extremely strong. They are surprisingly as strong as steel threads. The processing of these threads further gives us the silk fibers. In short, these are the four developmental stages of a silkworm's life cycle. The eggs come first, then the larval stage, followed by the pupal stage and lastly the adult stage where the mature moths fly out of the cocoon. But how and where do we get these cocoons from? Do we have to go to the forests where the mulberry trees are? Is there any other way to get them? The silkworms are reared in special farms. Rearing of these silkworms is a profitable industry by itself. The practice of culturing silkworms is called sericulture. Next, we will see this beautiful practice of sericulture and understand how silk fibers are obtained from the cocoons.
Here is a bee egg as it hatches into a larva. Those newly hatched larvae swim around their cells, feeding on a liquid food that nurse bees secrete for them. Then their head and their legs start to differentiate as they transform into pupae. Here's that same pupation process seen from above with varroa mites running around in the cells. Next, the tissue reorganizes in their body and the pigment slowly develops in their eyes. In the last step, their skin shrivels up and they sprout hair. How do huh? bees make honey? No idea. To make honey, the worker honeybee sucks nectar oh. from flowers and stores it in its honey stomach. Once the worker bee returns to the hive, it vomits the nectar into a processor honeybee's mouth. Ew. In the processor bee's mouth and oh. stomach, an enzyme called invertase is added to the nectar. Invertase breaks some nectar into simple sugars like glucose and fructose. Huh? Then it vomits the partially converted nectar into another processor bee's mouth, who also adds more invertase, helping break down more nectar. This process goes on until most of the nectar is converted into simple sugars. Then, the mixture of simple sugars is stored in the honeycomb. Oh. At this point, the mixture is still watery. Hence, the bees flap their wings, which evaporates water and thickens the mixture to eventually form honey. Hmm. Okay, time to head to work. But before this honeybee starts her commute, she's prepping her tools. Because honeybees collect pollen. You knew that. But it's not as simple as you might think. Plants want the bees to carry the pollen away and spread it to other flowers. That's pollination, how plants reproduce. But bees also need to carry lots of it home. Pollen is a protein-packed food for the hive. Luckily, they have the right gear. They're hairy, like tiny flying teddy bears. She's covered in three million hairs for trapping pollen. They're even on her eyes. Here on her legs, they're shaped into spiky brushes and flat combs. When she lands on a bloom, she really gets in there. Nibbling on the flower's anthers detaches the pollen. Time to pack up her haul. She cleans it off her eyes and antennae with those brushes on her front legs, like windshield wipers. Here it is up close. That leg wipes the pollen right off her eye. Then, she moves the pollen from leg to leg, like a conveyor belt. Front to middle to back. The bee does this super fast while she flies from bloom to bloom, moving the pollen into special baskets on her back legs, called corbiculi. She bends her leg using it to squish the pollen into a ball, packing it together with a little saliva and nectar. She can get as many as 160,000 pollen grains into each ball. She's hauling as much as one-third of her weight. Back at the hive, meal prep is about to start. But the pollen isn't for making honey. The honey, under this wax, is made from nectar. They eat it for its sugar. 
bees turn pollen into something completely different, bee bread. That's their source of protein. Step one, find an open spot. Step two, deposit your goods and pack them neatly. Step three, let the pollen marinate with a hint of honey. And voila, it's ready. The pantry is stocked, both for adult bees and the babies that are growing in the cells next door. The adults pop in to drop off a special bee bread snack, a little home cooking for the hive's future hardworking flyers. Okay, more bees 